If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we're going to do first is draw a free body diagram for the 10 kilogram crate and then also a separate free body diagram for the 5 kilogram crate. Let's start with the 10 kilogram crate. We can represent that crate with just a dot and then we want to draw the forces that are acting on that dot. We probably know that there's a gravitational force that's pulling downward on the block and we can call that mg and in fact we might as well call that m1g as long as we make sure that we label the 10 kilogram block with the number one. And then we also can see from the picture that there is a rope connected to the 10 kilogram block and that's actually pulling up on it. So we can draw a second force pulling up on the block and we'll label that with T which is going to stand for tension. And that would actually complete the free body diagram for that first block. Let's move on to the 5 kilogram block which turns out to be a little bit more complicated. So here we have that dot again representing this time the 5 kilogram block and what we've done is we've drawn an X axis as well as a Y axis sort of superimposed on that dot. Now looking at the picture we can see that the 5 kilogram block is attached to a rope just like the other block was and this rope is pulling up on the block in the direction up the ramp. So we can come over here and draw a force that's pointing in this direction here. Now there's also a gravitational force acting on the block and so that would point straight down and perhaps we can call that m2 times g as long as we label this block with a number 2. Now the problem with this force is that it lies in both the x and the y direction. What we want to do is break it into its so-called components so that one component points along the x-axis and the other component points along the y-axis. Now from the diagram we were told that the angle between the ramp and the horizontal was 40 degrees. It turns out that this angle is also 40 degrees. And so as long as we know that we're going to be able to find the x component as well as the y component. Let's start with the x component. And the x component would be pointing in the x direction. So it would be pointing in this direction right here. And we can see that that x component is opposite to the 40 degree angle. Because it's opposite, we're going to use the sine function. So we're actually going to take the gravitational force of m2 times g and multiply it by the sine of the 40 degree angle. And then we have the y component, which would point in this direction. And that component is adjacent to the 40 degree angle, so we'll use the cosine. So we'll take the gravitational force of m2 times g and multiply it by the cosine of 40. Now, once you have your y and your x components, it's a good idea to erase the original force because it tends to get in the way. We really only need to deal with the components. So let's go ahead and delete or erase the original gravitational force. Now, it turns out there is one more force acting on the 5 kilogram block. And to see where that force is coming from, we can come back to the original picture. Notice that the block, because of gravity, is pushing down against the ramp. And in response, the ramp will push back on the block. And so we can draw a force showing the ramp pushing back on this block, and it turns out that we call that force the normal force. We can call that Fn. And you'll notice that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. That's actually what the word normal means. It means perpendicular. So there we have the final free body diagram for the 5 kilogram block. Now, after, our, after drawing our free body diagrams, we're going to turn next to Newton's second law. And we recall that Newton's second law means that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. Now usually when you apply Newton's second law you want to do so in the x and y directions separately. So it's really a good idea to write Newton's second law as the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction and then separately the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. So let's go back to our first free body diagram and perhaps we can arbitrarily label this direction the positive direction since it's upward and this direction the negative direction. We can see that these two forces are acting in the y direction so we'll write Newton's second law as the sum of the forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. The tension force is pointing in the positive x direction so we'll have positive t and then the other force is pointing in the negative direction so we'll have minus m1 times g and then we'll set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now the key thing to note here is that because this block is more massive than the other block, that means it's going to be accelerating downward. And because it's accelerating downward, we actually want to make sure we call that acceleration negative. So what we want to do is actually back up and stick a negative sign in front of here. 
and then write the mass of that block times its acceleration. It turns out if you miss that negative sign, you would get this problem wrong. So we'll make sure that we include that. Now we can turn over to the second free body diagram of the five kilogram block. And we're going to examine the forces that are acting in this case in the x direction. So we're going to write Newton's second law as the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. And we can see that there are two forces acting in the x direction. There is this force right here, which was the rope pulling up on the five kilogram block. It looks like we forgot to label that force. So let's come back. And because that's the rope, we're going to label that the tension force. So that should have been labeled with a T. Make sure you make note of that. And then the other force that's acting in the x direction is this one right here. Now we'll notice that the tension force is pointing up the ramp, which we can call the positive direction. And then this force is pointing down the ramp, which we can call negative. And so when we write our Newton's second law, we're going to have the positive T minus M2G times the sine of 40. And we'll be setting that equal to the mass of that five kilogram block times its acceleration. Now, one of the key things to note is that because these blocks are attached by the same rope, the tension in this portion of the rope right here and this portion of the rope here is going to be the same. That's why we've used the letter T for those tensions rather than, so let's say, T1 and T2. It's not necessary to do that. Also, because they're connected, their accelerations are going to be the same. So we can keep the acceleration labeled with just an A, both here as well as here. We don't have to call it A1 and A2 because these accelerations are the same. Let's next stack these equations on top of each other. And by doing this, we can take advantage of a little algebraic trick. What we're going to do is actually subtract the two equations. It might be a good idea to put this quantity in parentheses. The reason that that's nice is because we're going to end up with t minus t, which will cancel those tensions. So the tensions are actually going to cancel if we do this. And then we'll have negative m1g minus a negative m2 times g times sine of 40. And of course, subtracting a negative means we're adding, so we can change that to two plus signs. And that's going to equal negative m1a minus m2a. Now we can try to solve this equation for the acceleration a. And we can see that it appears in two different terms on the right hand side, which means we can factor it out. So let's factor out the a, and then we'll be left with negative m1 minus m2. And then the left side is the same. And we can divide both sides by the term negative m1 minus m2. And that way, we will have successfully isolated the acceleration. And now at this point, we can simply plug in the known values for the masses. Remember, m1 was 10 kilograms and m2 was 5 kilograms. And of course, g is 9.8. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. And then when we carefully crunch that down, after plugging it into our calculators, we should get about 4.43 meters per second squared is going to be the magnitude of the acceleration of the five kilogram crate as well as the 10 kilogram crate as well. So this is the answer to part A. For part B, we can return to one of our tension equations. So let's put those back up. And so here was our first Newton's second law equation. Turns out it might be easier just to use this one. Why don't we go ahead and add m1g over to the right hand side. So we'll have negative m1a plus m1g. And then we can plug in the known values. So we have 10 kilograms for m1. The acceleration we just found to be 4.43. And then we'll add that to 10 times 9.8. Pick up our calculators and process that. And we are left with about 53.7 newtons. So this would be the correct answer for the tension in the string and part B of the question.